do not allow your circumstance to diminish your productivity in the time of your troubles. In Jesus' name we ask you, speak a word to us now. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Now look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God has a plan for your life. Live like it. Find somebody else. A neighbor, neighbor, God has a plan for your life. Live like it. You may be seated in the house. A very interesting context of Jeremiah, often referred to as the weeping prophet, who comes and has to deliver a word that directly opposes what they have been hearing from the other prophets and suppose men of God who speak for him. They tell them that their captivity won't be long. They assure them that everything will be right. Bishop Wright, it's good to see you. I'm gonna, I got that right in there. He, they assured them that everything was going to be over sooner than later. They gave them fantasy prophecy to set them up, not realizing that God has a purpose for everything we go through. And it's not always God's purpose that we escape trouble, but to remain in trouble Proving our faithfulness in the midst of our trouble as well as our struggles. So Jeremiah comes and he hears from the Lord. And, and Jeremiah can get confused at times because God, you say so many different things. And how can I say this to the people? But he goes and tells them, I want you to correct the fallacy of those false prophets. You let them know this. And he starts right off to let us know that the reason they're, they're where they are in captivity is because God allowed it. I sent you into captivity. Uh, you know, Nebuchadnezzar might have been the one who orchestrated his part of it, but recognize I caused it to happen. So don't, don't look to Nebuchadnezzar as if he's got control over the situation. Nebuchadnezzar is only a pawn in fulfillment of my purpose. He can only do what I instruct him to do. I have instructed him to take you in because you guys weren't acting right. Now there's consequence when we don't perform the way God would have us to perform. When we don't do what God has called us to do, when we are disobedient to the plan and the will and purpose of God, there are consequences. But I'm glad that God is not that type of vindictive person, that he holds it against you the rest of your life. And even if he allows you to get into something, God already has a plan of how he's going to get you out of it. Though you're suffering and going through a lot of stuff, God knows when it's going to end and he knows how it's going to end. And all he asks you to do is to trust him while you're in it. Well, the whole point is, is learning how to trust God. And it's easy to trust God when you're not going through bad times. When everything is working out right, it's, it's easy. But it's when stuff goes bad that we don't appreciate and understand what God is doing. God sometimes uses folk who we just don't understand. When I looked over into Habakkuk, I, I, I know in Habakkuk, uh, he had a, a, a great deal of problem with how God was reacting and responding uh, to their situation. Uh, God, when he... When, when Habakkuk asked God, you know, what's going on? God says, uh, I, I, I know where you are. I understand your situation. I know it's not anything that you want. 
but it's purpose behind it. And what I'm going to do, I, I, I'm going to use the Chaldeans to deliver you. That was confusing to Habakkuk. Habakkuk said, what? That hated nation, you're going to use them to bring about our deliverance? And he says, yes, I am. You may not understand it, but I know what I'm doing. Just tell your neighbor, God knows what he's doing in your life. I may not understand what's happening, but God knows what he's doing. And he's got purpose behind everything that's going on in your life. Uh, the Bible first mentions Babylon in Genesis chapter 10. The chapter uh, tells us about the table of nations. And it traces the descendants of Noah's three sons and genealogy of Ham. Cush was the father of Nimrod who grew to be a mighty warrior on earth in Genesis 10 and 8. Uh, we find him there. Nimrod founded a kingdom that included a place called Babylon in China. This great powerful king established a kingdom. And understand the whole thing behind it. They were all trying to do one thing is to build a tower up to God. To use human measures to reach God. To with everything we have to purpose to get to a place where only God can allow you. You cannot creep up, sneak up, or build up to God. The only way you can get to him, God has to allow you to. It is by permission, divine permission, that God gives us access to him. But it's also an understanding that God knows how to bring some folk out who do not have all the power to do what they think they should do and could do and desire to do just to let them know I'm a God that purposes your life. And you don't need good times to have a wealthy and powerful experience and relationship with me. You may be in a bad place, but I know how to bring joy to bad places. Oh, let me see. The Tower of Babel gives us the whole story of the Chaldeans and the Chaldean dynasty, and it continues, and you have Nebuchadnezzar, king over this great and powerful country and they take over from uh, the children of Israel, the children of God and they're brought into captivity by God's permission. Whenever God's people require discipline, God used the Babylonian empire to accomplish it. But he limited Judah's captivity to 70 years, as we just read. Then God promised to punish the king of Babylon and his nation in Jeremiah 25 and 12. Sometimes if you stop too soon, you miss out on God's ultimate purpose. Because what happens if you would stop there in, uh, in, in, in the early chapters, if you stop there in the chapters before, in chapter 29, we're told the good things in chapter 25. We already know for all the wrong in chapter 25 and 12, for all the wrong they have done in Zion, in Jeremiah 51 and 24, it says, ultimately, all evil will be judged. And as symbolized by Babylon's demise in Revelation 18 and 21, the great city of Babylon will be thrown down never to be found again. Look to your neighbor, says, neighbor, no matter who your enemies are, God's going to take care of it. That's why we're told, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. You don't have to take vengeance out on anybody. If somebody has done you wrong, don't worry about it. God's going to take care of it. Look to your neighbor and says, my help is in the Lord. And if my help is in the Lord, I recognize and realize God's going to take care of every situation that is meant for evil. God's going to turn it around and use it for good. Well, it's a terrible situation. 
But then I was delighted to hear how this letter progresses. Let me go back and read just into it and slide into what it says. This was after King Jehoiakim, Queen Mother, court officials, other officials of Judah, and all the craftsmen and artisans had been deported from Jerusalem. He sent the letter with Elisha, son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, son of Hilkiah, when they went to Babylon as King Zedekiah's ambassadors to Nebuchadnezzar. This is what Jeremiah's letter said. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says to all the captives he has exiled to Babylon from Jerusalem. Build homes. Let me deal with point one. <laughs> no matter what you're going through, God is still in control. If, you, if you're making a note, you can make this note and put down on there. First thing, whatever I go through, one thing I ought to keep in mind, God is still in control. Whatever may appear to be out of control is not out of control because God is ultimately still controlling. Even the time of your misery, God is controlling it. Even the length of your ministry or your misery, God is still controlling it. The Lord God of Israel rules over all. 29 verse 4 eight. God is control of my life process. I'll trust him through it. And if God is in control of my life process, the only thing I can tell you is trust God through whatever the process you're going through because God is imminently aware of what you're going through, but he also knows where you're going to. You may not see the two, but God sees the two while you're going through. <laughs> I can't always see my two because of what I'm going through. Because in the through process, you get blinded by the dust and everything else that's going on. But God can see beyond your through to what you're going to. Uh, just tell your neighbor, neighbor, God sees where you're going. He sees where you're going. That means that he is not as distressed as you are. Because he knows ultimately what he has planned. And he also sees your destiny. Though you're in your misery, he sees your destiny. And if he sees your destiny, he knows there's a good thing about to happen in your life. So point one, God is still in control. Secondly, God is aware of your situation. He permitted what you're going through. And it's okay. Oftentimes we fret about what we're going through and think that God has forsaken us. But I'm here to let somebody know whatever you're going through, God has not forsaken you. God is aware of what you're going through. God is aware of everything and, it, 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 and it's okay. All of those he sent into exile to Babylon from Jerusalem, it's inconvenient. It's uncomfortable. We don't like it. But it's okay. Whenever we come into the house of the Lord, that's why we can praise him. Not because we come here and there's no problems bothering us. Bothering us. All of us have come here with some problems and some issues. But I'm here to tell somebody tonight, it's okay. Because you may be going through what you're going through, but it's okay. Because if God were ignoring you, then it wouldn't be okay. But God says, I am aware. I see where you are. And I got a word to tell you. Don't worry about where you are. You can't see where you're going, but I see where you're going. It may take a little while. 70 years will pass. But after 70 years, I see the blessing coming. I see the joy coming. I see everything coming. When two God is aware of your situation. Point three. God's expectation is for me to thrive and not merely survive. When, when I look at this word and look at the text, I said, wow, you're saying some stuff to them that doesn't make sense. How are you going to tell them 
to act like everything is okay. He goes in and he tells them, and now build homes and plan to stay. <laughs> I said, wow, Lord, here I am in exile. We don't know we're here because it is a part of our punishment. But God says, don't worry about my punishment. My punishment is not going to end in your disaster. It's going to end in your blessing. And while you're there, don't be quick to get out of it. Build some homes. Woo, Lord, Lord, it don't make sense. You mean that in my miserable place, you want me to build a home? He says, yes, build a home there. You don't have to let your exile keep your brain exiled from my presence. Understand, I'm with you. I see you. I know you. I might not have brought you out yet, but I want you to build homes as if I already brought you out. Tell your neighbor, you got to act like you're still blessed. Oh, let, let, let me go work with this here. How am I going to act like I'm still blessed and I'm up here stuck in Babylon? He said, I purposed you there. And if I purpose you there, there's a blessing in the place that I purposed. And I want you to understand, I am not departing from you I'm with you even in that place that you don't want to be I am already there and I'm with you and I'm telling you now just build your house you know one of the ways to confuse the enemy once the enemy has you down is still acting like everything's okay <laughs> what are these crazy folk building houses for here they in exile and they're going to build houses they're going to do all that. That don't make sense. Don't y'all know that y'all are in exile? You're in this place, strange place, ruled by the king of Babylon? This is no. We're in a place ruled by God. For the word tells me the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein, he established it. Not Nebuchadnezzar. Not the Babylonians. If you're anywhere in this world, you're in a blessed place. I don't care how messed up it is. You're still in a blessed place. Let me give God praise. So God has expectation. Build a house in it. <laughs> Settle down. Trust God and his grace while you're in disgrace. Now, I had to go slow here. <laughs> Trust God. It's grace. While you're in your disgrace. Because God has not promised to leave you there. His grace works in your disgrace. Because God knows the plan he has for your life. He did not purpose to bring you to disaster. He promised to bring you out. And though you're in a place of disgrace, his grace is greater. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, his grace is greater than your disgrace. So build a house. Settle down. Allow him to prove himself to be a God in your praise and worship and your joy as well as in your sorrow. And go to point four. He says, nurture yourself. Plant a garden. And feed yourself from it. God's word is your seed. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. You may be in a terrible place. But don't stop sowing seed. Tell your neighbor, sow the seed of the word. Every time you open your mouth. 
you give God praise and you sow seed. The devil may say one thing, the enemy may say another thing, but you got to declare for yourself, but God is the light of my life. God is the strength of my life. God is my joy and my strength. God is the one that is keeping me right now. God is my protector. God is my healer. God is my way maker. God will never forsake me, nor will he leave me. It is God. Sow seeds of confidence. I know it's a bad situation, but sow some confidence seeds. Throw it down in the earth. Water it with some praise. And watch and see if God will not cause it to grow. And while you're trapped in the place of a captor, God will bless you in the midst of your captivity. God will cause you to prosper in the place that was meant to take away everything that you had. But God will not leave you nor forsake you. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Nurture yourself in your captivity. Plant a garden and feed yourself. Anybody who may be in here moping, complaining, and bewailing, say, God, I don't know why you got me in this place. I don't know why this is happening to me. I don't know why you allow me to go through all of this. God says, I'm teaching you how to get real good seed. You're going through some hard times, but I get good seed in hard times. Did anybody know some of the best blessings you had came after you were gone through something? Has anybody ever been through some real hard, difficult moments in your life and out of that God brought some good seed, some strong crop, some strong produce? Understand God knows where you are. And he says, build a house there. Stay a little while. You're going to be here for a little bit. Go ahead and plant a garden. Feed yourself. <laughs> Act like you're back home. <laughs> Act like you're in the place that you're meant to be all the time. Act like God is still with you. When we have pains and we go through sickness and illnesses, the worst thing you could do is act like God has forsaken you. With every pain, you ought to give God praise. Whatever disappointment, you ought to give God praise. With everything that doesn't go the way you want it to go, you ought to give God praise. Because somewhere God is around and he is watching over you and keeping you in the midst of everything you're going through. I will yet praise him. I will give him glory and honor. Because he is yet my God. Uh, point five. Build up your numbers expand and do not dwindle away grow generations under you one of the things that we think that when things are going bad we have no compulsion we have no motivation to try to build and bring children into a bad situation <sighs> But the Lord says, don't let your bad situation stop you from producing. Let me, let me walk this a little bit slower. I want to make sure you get this. Don't allow your situation to deprive you of an extension of a family that God is calling you to build. Don't stop. You cannot have babies except you get in the bed. Well, let me. He says, how in the world are we going to do this? And I'm living where I'm living. He said, I didn't stop you from production or reproduction. I just have you in a bad place. But I still got the right spirit in you. 
So I want you to make sure that you have children. Make babies. Not only you, but make sure your babies have babies. And their babies have babies. Make sure generationally you do not diminish, but to grow. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to grow. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Pastor Ludlow, I had a look at this. I said, Lord, I mean, you sent a letter like that by Jeremiah to folk who are living in captivity. They must thought he's crazy. He said those other prophets, so-called, made better sense than he did. At least they're promising us that we're going to get out of this soon. But Jeremiah the prophet doesn't promise them a quick exit. But he promises them a productive captivity. What? How can I be productive in captivity? When God makes a way, he can make a way out of no way. And no matter what you're going through, God knows how to bless his people and cause you to be a blessing even when you're in a mess. Oh, Lord. Build up your numbers. Grow the generations. Well, let's say verse 6 again. He says in there again, he, what is this? Yeah, yeah, he says that uh, uh, marry and have children. Then find spouses for them so that you may have many grandchildren. Multiply. Do not dwindle away. Never let your circumstance deprive you of product productivity. Never allow what you're going through to stop you from still producing. Tell your neighbor, you can still produce when you're in a bad place. Oh, Lord, have mercy. A bad place, a bad place, a bad. Still productive. I'm doing like a teach preach tonight. I, I had to go through this. So to let you understand and know, when, when I saw that and I looked at it, I said, Lord, you're speaking to us today. You're letting us know today, no matter what we're experiencing right now, God is with us and God is causing us to come out of whatever it is we're in. And we're not looking for the end game to see how long it will take because God said, you're going to be here for a while. But while you're there, do this. I'm going to show you how to live in your bad situation. That's one thing I love about the church. The church ought to be always telling somebody how they can still make it while things around them are changing and going crazy. He lets them know that you ought to know and recognize the fact you still have a song. You still have a praise. Because while things are not going the way you want them to go, you still give God praise in the thing that you're in, knowing that God is the one that's working it out. And, and, and after a while, God has a plan. And his plan is not to leave you where you are. But to why you are where you are, to cause you to prosper and to thrive. Okay, and then point six. He says, work to bring peace and prosperity to the city of your captivity as it prospers. You will prosper. Bishop Dexter, I had to take a little time here. Because the last thing you want to do is to help your captors to get blessing. You don't want your captors to be blessed. You don't want those who brought you into captivity to be blessed. But he writes to them and says, what I want you to do is don't act like spoiled brats taken into captivity and take it out on the city. I purpose the city for you. I have you in that city to bless the city. Oh Lord, that's one thing. Okay, I, I just hear that. Okay. We are in this earth to be a blessing in the earth. Wherever you are, you ought to be a blessing. Wherever you are, somebody ought to know that God is blessing you. You may not have everything that you want to have. 
All the plans might not have gone the way you want them to go. But in the midst of everything, I will still bless the ones who have me under duress. But I understand that my, your duressing or distressing me is not going to destroy the blessing that God has seeded in me. I still have a praise. I still have a song. I'm a little bit different from those. In the Psalms it says, they asked us to, to sing one of the Lord's songs. <laughs> and we said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now I don't know if he wrote that before Jeremiah wrote this. <laughs> Because if he'd heard this, then he wouldn't worry about it. He said, come on, choir. Let's sing. Because I know God is working out something even in this time. I got a song to sing. I don't care what bad times you have. You always ought to have a song to sing. You always ought to have a praise. Don't go around looking like a lemon. All puckered up and sour. Give God praise. You may have gone through the worst week in your life. But when I get into the house of the Lord, I'm ready to give God praise. When I get here, I know that God has blessed me. Everything is not right yet, but I'm praising him anyhow. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, praise him anyhow. Anyhow. And so into their lives the goodness of the Lord. Now, I, I, let me just, this is the last of the points there, but I, I, I want to do with this again. Work to bring peace and prosperity to the city of your captivity. God has planned for your life. And now we must live like it. One of the most joyful people on the face of the earth ought to be the child of God. Mind you, I live in a country that I don't know what's going on. Uh, you live in a country <laughs> that you don't know what's going on. And some things are working completely opposite of what you think. I live in a place that says, God, what is this? What do I see? What am I supposed to do? He said, you praise me anyhow. There's stuff going on. Craziness back at home. Oh, some shooters been coming out. Walking into Walmart. And just killing folk. Randomly. Taking lives away. Doing it at other places. A six-year-old was shot and killed in the midst of others. Within, I guess, seven days of the same thing happening. And it's craziness going on. We can run and hide. Or we can stand up and still declare, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God is looking after me. God is looking after you. And we need to start living like it. The happiest people on the face of the earth ought to be the blood-bought children of God. We declare it. We ought to look like it. Stand on your feet, everybody, with me. And I look at your neighbor. Smile. I mean, give him the best smile. 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 The best, the best, the best, the best. The best. Smile like you never had a day of misery in your life. Smile like you know the Lord is bringing you out tomorrow. Smile. Like you're going to win a million dollars tomorrow. It's already on its way to the bank. You already have the statement that it is processing. 
That's a wonderful thing I like about the grace of God. I, I may not have it in my account yet. But God said, Jeremiah, go tell those captives in Babylon that their blessing is processing. Now, let me show you how this works. <laughs> When I want to know if something's coming into my account, I check it out. It hadn't gotten there yet. It just tells me it's processing. That, that, that means it's, it, it, it's in the right track. It, it hasn't come to my real balance yet, but it, it's processing. I want you to just look to your neighbor. It's processing. <laughs> it's processing. Bishop. It's processing. If God has already stated and promised, I rely on it. And when I look in the count, it's processing. It may take midnight for it to show up, but midnight's coming. Because after midnight, then all of the stuff gets processed. I may not see it today, but after midnight, I'm going to see a new balance. I'm going to see that it got deposited. And the Lord has already done what he said. Somebody give God praise in here. Shout hallelujah. Live like it. I know here we're going through a lot of different things and they're playing. And I understand, whenever you get into a, a building process, a moving process, a, a ministry uh, transferring, transplanting process, it, it's, it, it's weighty. Because nothing you expect to go right goes right. Stuff that you anticipate to happen doesn't happen when you think it's going to happen. And the way you think it ought to happen. But that doesn't mean that I give up hope because in the midst of it, it's already in the process. It hasn't hit the account yet, but my account alerts me that something is about to happen. In the spirit, I already feel it processing. In the spirit, I already know it's happening because I see the evidence of the deposit that's coming into my life. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, your deposit is coming. Don't worry about the present situation. The deposit, it's on its way. Keep looking for it. Go to sleep. Don't worry yourself. In the morning, when you get up. Now I have a situation on my phone that when the deposit's made, my phone lets me know. I get a message. And the message alerts me. It lets me know that there's been a message sent to me. And I see it's from my bank. And I open it up and I see a new balance. The new balance is the hope promised coming into reality. I'm here to tell somebody today, don't worry about your before midnight balance. Give God praise for the balance that is going to be seen after the midnight hour. After midnight. What he promised shall come to pass. I'm going to raise this question. This is part of the altar call today. You're here tonight. I thank God for the theme. I thank for the, the vision of how it was purposed and brought through and brought out. Thank God. You, you choir, you always bless me. I, I praise God. Directors, organists, musicians, we praise God for you. But understand in everything, we trust you, God. And that's the basics. 
Not every you standing up here. Some of you may have gone through some real tough times and still have some issues that are lingering, that are not settled. But yet I praise them anyhow because I trust God for what I'm believing to see. The writer says, I would have fainted except I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. I put it this way. Trust the Lord. Your deposit is on the way if you just trust Him. This is the call. Anyone who is at a place right now that it is a difficult place but at the same time you're pressing your way through I want you to come here and stand in the front of this altar if you don't know the Lord let me say this is a good place to be because the first thing you want to do is make sure I surrender my life to the Lord so I can at least open up my account you, you, you got to join first to establish your account <laughs> you got to at least become a member. Now, I say join the church. At least come and give your life and commitment to God. That way you establish the criteria. For, I, I'm a member. I, I, I'm glad. Uh, I, I, I have in my pocket. Uh, let me see how this works here. I have one of these. It's a Costco membership card. I can't get discounted gas or petrol at Costco if I don't first insert my card. It qualifies me as a member and entitled to discount. If I put in this other card, it won't work in Costco. If I put in my other card, it won't work at Costco. The only card that works at Costco is a Costco card. Somebody's trying to get discounts in the kingdom and they don't have a kingdom card. <laughs> You're putting everything else in but the right card. So I, I want to make sure that anybody that don't have their kingdom card, you need to come down here first. Because you got to get that first. Now, God will give you some benefits. And every now and then, they run promotions. I can give you a pre-membership blessing. But if you want to continue this thing, you got to become associated with the kingdom. So that's my card. It's, it's worth something. And understand, I'm glad I got this card. The only thing about it, that when I come to Costco up here, I may have to Stay a little while. Because everybody's lined up in and trying to get gas. So I try to find the right time and the right place. But you never have a backup in God's house. God is always willing to give and to do. I'm calling now somebody. I want somebody to come to the front now who says, Lord, I hear the message and I, I realize what it is. Now I comprehend that it is God's plan that I not end in disaster. That what I'm going through is not meant to destroy me, but it's meant to build me. And God has a plan and a purpose for me that is for his good. Someone here who knows that God is working in your life, but you got a whole lot of different things that may be going on. Would you first come? First come. Your walk by faith says, God, I acknowledge the fact that wherever I'm going through, I'm declaring when I walk up to this place that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That anything that's going on in my life, it will not destroy me. I am blessed by the Lord. Anybody going through some stuff? How many's got some miseries and some pains and other things going on? I bet you come on up here right now. Because what you're doing, you're declaring.